Hello students, today we will be talking about role of CEDAW for promotion and protection of women's rights. Now it is a universally accepted fact that there cannot be a complete development of human civilization unless all sections of the society contribute equally to their full potential. It is equally an accepted fact that the female gender has all along been subdued and bearing the brunt of discrimination, exploitation and subjugation at the hands of their male counterpart through various cultural, traditional or religious practices throughout history. Now the middle part of 20th century saw the upsurge of women liberation movement in different parts of the globe, especially amongst the European countries demanding equal status of women with men. The movement steadily spread to almost every part of the world. The international community under the ages of the United Nations for the first time recognized women's rights as one of the most important human right and it got reflected in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights as well as the International Covenants on Human Rights and thereafter various declarations, resolutions and recommendations were adopted by the United Nations and its specialized agencies promoting equally of rights of men and women. However, despite existence of various treaties and resolutions, extensive discrimination continued to exist. Considering that discrimination against women violates the principle of equality of rights and respect of human dignity and that it is an obstacle to the participation of women on equal terms with men in the political, social, economic and cultural life of their countries hampers the growth of the potentialities of women in the service of their countries and of humanity and on being fully convinced that the full and complete development of the country, the welfare of the world and the cause of peace requires the maximum participation of women on equal terms with men in all fields and that a change in the traditional role of men as well as the role of women in society and in the family is needed to achieve full equality between men and women. Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women which we call CEDAW was adopted and open for signature, ratification and accession by the General Assembly Resolution 34 by 180 of 18th December 1979. It came into force on 3rd December 1981. Of all the existing treaties signed by the international community for protection of the right of women, the Convention on Elimination of all forms of discrimination against women, what we call CEDAW, which is often described as the Bill of Women's Rights, is the most important treaties ever entered upon by the international community. Consisting of a preamble which elaborately lays down the premises in which the convention was necessitated to bring forth followed by 30 articles which defines what constitute discrimination against women and sets up an agenda for the state action to end such discrimination. Now CEDAW 
is a practical blueprint for each country to achieve progress for women and girls. Out of all the countries, Sweden became the first state to deposit the treaty on July 2, 1980. To date, 187 out of 194 countries have ratified the treaty. Surprisingly, the United States is one of the seven countries including Iran, Sudan, South Sudan, Somalia and two small Pacific Island nations, Palau and Tonga that have not yet ratified CEDAW. Ratification of the CEDAW Treaty requires two-thirds of the Senate to stand together for women and has no financial costs. By accepting the convention, states commit themselves to undertake a series of measures to end discrimination against women in all forms. The convention provides the basis for realizing equality between women and men through ensuring women's equal access to and equal opportunities in political and public life. That includes the right to vote and to stand for election, as well as education, health and employment. The Convention is the only human right treaty which affirms the reproductive rights of women and targets culture and tradition as influential forces shaping gender roles and family relations. It affirms women's rights to acquire, change or retain their nationality and the nationality of their children. States have also agreed to take appropriate measures against all forms of trafficking in women. The convention consists of six parts and, as I said earlier, 30 articles. Part 1 of the convention comprises of six articles. Article 1 defines the term discrimination against women as any distinction, exclusion or restriction made on the basis of sex which has the effect or purpose of impairing or nullifying the recognition, enjoyment or exercise by women irrespective of their marital status on a basis of equality of men and women, of human rights and fundamental freedoms in the political, economic, social, cultural, civil or any other field of preventing women from enjoying human right on an equal basis with men. Now, Article 2 to 5 of the CEDAW Convention together with Article 1 provide the framework for elimination of discrimination against women by taking all appropriate measures to modify or abolish existing laws, regulations, customs and practices and to repeal penal provisions which constitutes discrimination against women. Article 6 provides for countries to take steps to suppress the exploitation of prostitution and trafficking in women. Part 2 of the convention comprise Article 7 to 9. This part deals with the political rights of women to participate fully in public life on equal terms with men, including their right to vote in all elections 
and public referenda and to be eligible for elections to all publicly elected bodies and to participate in the governance and formulation of government policy. Article 9 provides for granting women equal rights with men to acquire, change or retain their nationality and safeguard her against deprivation or forcible change of citizenship due to change of citizenship by her husband during marriage. Part 3 of the Convention comprises of Article 10 to 14 which deals with provision for ensuring access to education, employment, health care, economy and social life without any discrimination. It also envisages for ensuring special provisions of rural women. Article 10 obligates state parties to take all appropriate measures to eliminate discrimination against women in order to ensure equal rights with men in the field of education and same condition for career and vocational guidance and access to any category of studies and achievements of higher qualification. Article 11 obligates state to take all appropriate measures to eliminate discrimination against women in the field of employment to ensure the same rights with men understanding that right to work is an inalienable right of all human beings and that right to the same employment opportunities including the application of the same criteria for selection in matters of employment and right to free choice of profession and employment, old age, etc. Now, Article 12 to 13 obligates states to take all appropriate measures to eliminate discrimination in the field of health care, economic and social life. It aims to provide free services and adequate nutrition during pregnancy and lactation and in confinement and the postnatal period. Article 14 obligates states parties to ensure participation of women in the elaboration and implementation of development planning at all levels and to have adequate access to healthcare facilities including information counseling services in family planning and also availing benefit directly from social security programs by organizing self-help groups, cooperatives, etc. Part 4 of the convention deals with provisions ensuring equality of women with men before law in all matters. Article 15 obligates states to accord to women legal capacity identical to that of men in concluding contracts and to administer property and for treating women equally in all stages of procedure in courts and tribunal. Article 16 requires the state to take measures for elimination of discrimination in matters of marriage and family relations and to ensure same right with men to enter into marriage freely choose spouse with their free and full consent, same rights and responsibilities during marriage and dissolution, same rights and responsibilities as parents and in matters relating to children spacing of children, choosing family names, a profession and an occupation, ownership of properties, etc.
part 5 comprising of articles 17 to 22 deals with provisions for constitution of CEDAW committee which will monitor the progress made in the implementation of the convention. Article 17 provides that for the purpose of considering the progress made in the implementation of the convention, a committee consisting of 23 experts of high moral standing and competence in the field covered by the convention who shall be elected by secret ballot from list of persons nominated by state parties from among their nationals with consideration being given to equitable geographical distribution and to the representation of the different forms of civilization as well as the principal legal system. The members of the committee shall be elected for a term of four years. The Secretary General of the United Nations shall provide the necessary staff and facilities for the effective performance of the functions of the committee. Article 18 obligates state parties to submit to the Secretary General of the United Nations a report on the legislative, judicial, administrative or other measures which they have adopted to give effect to the provisions of the convention and on the progress made in this respect with one year or whenever the committee so requests. The CEDAW committee shall adopt its own rules of procedure and shall elect its officers for a term of two years. The committee shall report annually to the General Assembly of the United Nations through the Economic and Social Council on its activities with suggestions and general recommendations based on the reports and information received from state parties. The Secretary General of the United Nations shall transmit the reports of the committee to the Commission on the Status of Women for its information. Specialized agencies are entitled to be represented at the consideration of the implementation of provisions of convention which fall within the scope of their activities. The optional protocol is framework of mechanisms to assist in the implementation of CEDAW. It came into force on 22nd December 2000. The protocol contains two distinct procedures, a communications or petition procedure and an inquiry procedure. The communications procedure entitles individuals or group of individuals who fulfill certain preconditions to submit communications or petitions in which they claim to be victims of violations of any of the rights set forth in the convention by a state party. The inquiry procedure entitles a committee of its own motion to inquire into grave or systematic violations of the convention in a state party. A complaint under the optional protocol claiming that her rights under the treaty have been violated can only be brought against the state which is party to the CEDAW convention and has recognized the competence of the CEDAW committee to consider complaints from individuals through acceptance of the optional protocol. The claims should be accompanied by 
details of any administrative or judicial decisions taken at the national level with respect to the matter including copies of the decisions as well as copies of all relevant national laws if the complaint contains sufficient information relating to the admissibility criteria as well as the merits of the case the complaint will be registered by the cedaw committee and the procedure for consideration of communication will begin in order for a communication to be admissible all available domestic remedies must have been exhausted under article 4 and 1 by pursuing her claim through the local court system now there are however exceptions to this rule thus if exhaustion of domestic remedies would be unreasonably prolonged or if they would be clearly ineffective such as where the law in the state on the issues is clear or if remedies are otherwise unavailable for example if legal aid is available but denied the complainant may not require to exhaust domestic remedies an inquiry may be instigated on the basis of information received from any source including for example women's organization or human rights group information that appears to be submitted to initiate an inquiry must be forwarded by the secretariat to the committee and maintained in a permanent register after the committee has examined the information and asserted that it is reliable it must then invite the state party concerned to comment within a certain time limit the committee considers any comments any additional information including from representatives of the state party non government organizations and individuals as well as relevant united nations documentation on the basis of this information the committee may decide to designate one or more of its members to conduct the inquiry and report within a fixed time limit an inquiry may include a visit to the state party as long as the state party consents after the inquiry comes to an end the committee is required to transmit its findings to the state party together with any comments or recommendations the procedure is confidential but a summary of the committee's activities in relation to the procedure must be provided in its annual report to the general assembly the committee on the elimination of discrimination against women is the united nations treaty body that oversees cedaw the committee is composed of 23 experts nominated by their governments and is elected by the states it can hold as many meetings as required to perform their duties effectively now during each of its regular sessions the committee hears reports from state party to the cedaw on their progress in adhering to cedaw and implementing its ideas in their country under article 18 the signatory states must report to the committee on the progress they have made in implementing the cedaw within their states initial reports discussing the current picture of discrimination against women in the reporting states are required 
to specifically deal with each article of the CDA. States are required to prepare and present this initial report within one year of ratifying the CEDA. Periodic reports must contain the state's progress in adhering to the articles of the CEDA since the state's last report and are required to provide periodic reports every four years. But if the committee is concerned about the situation in that state, then they can request a report at any time. Besides issuing its annual report and offering advice to reporting states, the committee has the power to issue general recommendations that elaborate on its views of the obligations imposed by CEDAW. To date, the committee has issued 25 general recommendations. The recommendations have been focused on guiding states application of the CEDAW in specific situations. The formulation of a general recommendation begins with dialogue between the committee on the topic in the recommendation with various non-governmental organizations and other UN bodies. Now let me conclude by saying that in countries that have ratified CEDA, women have partnered with the government to improve the status of women and girls and as a result have shaped policies to create greater safety and opportunity for women and their families. Hence, CEDA is a path-breaking convention towards achieving better status for women all through the world. With that, we conclude today's lesson. Thank you very much. Thank you.